welcome back previously we were discussing about non governmental promotional organizations how a credit cooperative is operate and also briefly discussed about the structure that is prevailing in a cooperative unit <coughs> there are two types of structures vertical as well as horizontal integration systems and most commonly used system is vertical integration let us discuss about the further areas that comes under the same category next one tripartism labor standards and social partners this is a sub main heading in which we will be discussing about the various labor standards and how these standards helps in improving the condition of the laborers or the workforce within a cooperative unit and the various social partners that has taken areas initiative for the upliftment of the weaker sections and tripartism means involvement of three set of groups during the course of discussion we will come across the term tripartism in some places at that time we will discuss up in detail regarding the concept of tripartism so let us begin with labor standards and cooperatives so under labor standards and cooperative the main thing which we are going to deal with is the standards that are implemented so as to improve the conditions of the laborers or the workforce or the various conventions and association that has been implemented for the improving the condition of the workforce so in general the how the conditions of the labor or the workforce can be improved that is we are going that is the area which we are going to deal in this area the international labor labor organization or otherwise known as ilo standards that deal with cooperatives is the recommendation concerning the role of cooperatives in the economic and social development of developing countries we all know that and the standard introduced by the ilo is widely used as a reference of cooperative policy and law makers in africa on the basis of that standards policies are framed for the welfare of the workers apart from that recommendations as per 127 is the only international guideline in the cooperative policy and legislation for the upliftment of labor force proposed revision of recommendations aims at reducing the role of state and external promoters in the cooperative development with an ongoing attempt to increase the participation of members because only through the participation of members a democratic system can be fully implemented concentration of power in the hands of state as well as external promoters will not lead to the upliftment of the con- situation of the labor force so in order to prevent that the international labor standards has set aside various conventions with regard to that such as convention number 87 of 1948 that deals with freedom of association that provides complete freedom to all those members who want to associate together for any cause whereas the convention of number 141 of 1975 accompanied by the recommendation number 149 includes establishing right of all rural workers to organize freely a variety of conventions and recommendations on occupational safety and health social security employment and working conditions of the labor force has been implemented all these has been implemented or set for the upliftment of the labor force within various cooperative societies even after all these the condition of the workforce remains 
bad the reason is that the members on the cooperatives are reluctant to grant better working conditions than their own but in case of a worker on the cooperatives where the members are co-owners and employees of joint enterprise refrain from certain low privileges to stay competitive the concept is that in a member owned cooperatives where the condition of the working force is quite bad when it is compared to the worker owned cooperatives it is with the logic is very simple in a worker owned cooperatives the workers don't know their conditions since they are the owners of the cooperatives they take necessary steps for the upliftment of the situation and at the same time they know what are the areas that has to be considered and what are the areas that has to be made sacrifice so as to maintain its competitive advantage so as far as the labor force is concerned or from the workers point of view worker owned cooperatives is much better than member owned cooperatives that is a concept with regard to labor standards and cooperatives next we are going to discuss about cooperatives and trade unions cooperatives and trade unions they work similar and they share a common value trade unions play a significant role in promoting cooperating enterprises among their members the trade unions made more emphasis on credit unions as well as consumer cooperatives and housing cooperatives whose services are of great benefit to the workers because all these credit union cooperatives consumer cooperatives and housing cooperatives are the most successful when it is compared to the agricultural cooperatives whereas trade unions in ethiopia and swaziland have themselves organized the biggest trade union remember this cooperative trade union set up in ethiopia and swaziland it is one of the biggest credit union with regard to other unions in existence Usually trade unions are established consumer cooperatives on the basis of specific profession of the members but apart from that trade unions play an important role in the promotion of cooperatives because these trade unions establish consumer cooperatives for retrenched workers and take over bankrupt enterprises retrenched workers means reduction in workforce and co trade unions also take necessary steps to take over bankrupt enterprises usually apex organization act as a trade union of self employed cooperatives and we have learned about the vertical integration structure and we know where the apex organization is situated in that particular flow chart so usually apex organization will be the trade union in a self employed cooperative unions and remember the cases of examples the cooperative unions in uganda and cameroon are the some of the examples of apex organizations acting as a trade unions next one cooperatives and employers organization as we all know cooperatives provide employment to the people at the same time cooperatives provide various working and better working conditions or facilities to the workers so the employers encourage establishment of cooperatives in their firm also why because 
it will provide credit facilities, low cost housing schemes, etc. So, what is the meaning of the employer organization cooperatives? We all know the concept of cooperatives. Cooperatives are societies, association of persons. In each cooperative, they provide facilities like credit facilities, low cost housing schemes. So, because of this, there was a huge demand for cooperative sector rather than other private employers organization. So, in order to deal with that, various employers organizations also encourage setting up of cooperatives within their firm so that they can provide credit facilities, low cost housing schemes, etc. Many large companies even given office space to cooperatives to their employees. So as to provide these cooperative facilities to the workers. And some of the examples with regard to that is mining company at Celebi Vikwe in Botswana and Ethiopian Airlines paper pulp factory in Swaziland. All these are the examples of employees organization who had provided cooperative facilities to their workforce. And at the same time, government also encourages such social cooperatives because these cooperatives provide various facilities to the workers. So, cooperatives are providing these facilities that should have been provided by the government. So, now government is freed from the offering such services. So, Providing the service to the workforce or labor force is an extra cost for the government. Since the cooperatives are providing these facilities, government is free from such expenditures. So, government encourages such cooperatives so because it reduces states or government's expenditures. And at the same time, employees union, union source. Employees union means unions that are for the welfare of the workers. Employees union also encourage such cooperatives because these cooperatives facilities provide various facilities to the workers. So it will ultimately improve the living conditions of the employees or workforce. And, and the employers of the organization also interested in providing supporting social oriented cooperatives because it brings down the cost of production and that ultimately improves the performance of the organization. That is the concept with regards to cooperatives and how these cooperatives are implemented in a employers organizations. Next one, experience methods and tools of employment creation through cooperatives. In this area, we will be discussing about various credit unions or cooperative unions or agricultural unions or housing facilities unions and many other different types of cooperative units and how they operate, how they help in generating employment opportunities, how they help in improving the condition of the labor force and all these areas will be dealt under this area so with regard to that firstly we will begin with client owned cooperatives under that the first and the foremost is agricultural cooperatives agricultural marketing and supply cooperatives otherwise known as ams provide input to farmers and helps to sell crops within and outside the country. So it helps the farmers in di disposing their products to the local wholesalers at the, as a, at the same time helps in exporting their products to overseas customers. Even some of them we own process its own processing facilities other additional services like the consumer distribution systems, financial intermediation, etc. So, agricultural marketing and supply cooperatives play an important role in helping all sorts of assistance to the farmers with regard to marketing of goods. 
why it is working like that because theoretically agriculture marketing and supply cooperatives are set up by farmers to increase their bargaining power by purchasing of inputs in bulk and jointly sell crops in some of the countries agriculture marketing and supply cooperatives enjoy monopoly in supply and marketing because there are no other persons or units that operate in this area and farmers become their full time members such cooperative gradually degenerated into governmental agencies and these monopoly traders were strongly protected and subsidized by state in many countries agriculture marketing supply cooperatives and their regional unions become the second largest employers after the government because agriculture marketing supply cooperatives are working so efficiently that helps the farmers in the different parts of the countries in africa and there are many other functions and facilities that are offered by agriculture marketing and supply cooperatives we will discuss in detail agriculture marketing and supply cooperatives and its actions in the coming sessions until then just go through the areas we have discussed if you have any queries please let me know